Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship and sex alchemist, Milica Jelanić. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. For those of you who are avid listeners of The Pleasure Zone, every once in a while, I will throw in something about DIY something or others. I had some DIY on how to make your own sex toys that were more like, well, it was like making your own whips and things and what you can use around the home that is, you know, that you don't have to go out and spend an arm and a leg on getting some fun, kinky things going on in your life. And so today I thought, wouldn't it be fun to talk about DIY sexy games that you can gift, whether you're gifting them for the holidays, you know, we're a few days into Hanukkah, whether you're gifting for Christmas, whether you're gifting for Kwanzaa, whether you are, you know, getting ready to gift for Valentine's Day or somebody's birthday. If you just want to gift for the heck of it, because you have a sexy somebody in your life and you're thinking, what can I do that's playful and fun and like affordable? And also this is a way to kind of give something that's home crafted and that comes from the heart and comes from your loins too, like inspired by your crotch. How beautiful is that? That is like, and your pleasure and everything that that could bring you. So not a lot of things uh, get to be put out in the world and gifted that are inspired by your genitals, I bet. So this is one of those that is inspired by pleasure and quite likely by your genitals. So we will be playing with all kinds of different games tonight. Games you might already have, things you can make, things you can do, things you can gift, things you can redo, like remake, re rehash, have fun with. And I like to try and keep these things all under like $20 and possibly reuse some of the things that you might have in other games uh, that are lying around. And one of the things that keeps popping in my brain is like Monopoly money. So I'm sure I will come up with a fun idea around Monopoly money. And I think too, there's just, there are so many cool games that are out there that are convert, that can be converted into a sexy game. So we can look at some of the ones you've already got and some of the ones that you could gift, whether you've already got them and you want to re redo them, you know, you can always edit the board game. You've got a, you know, 10 year old Monopoly game you haven't done anything with in a while and you want to remake it into some, something sexy, go right ahead. How fun is that? <laughs> so hopefully the people you're gifting these things to are not the kind of people who are like, OMG, you gave me a handmade gift. Oh, I can't believe you didn't just go out and buy something. You got to know who you're gifting to. So make sure that if you are gifting something like this, that this is to somebody who would appreciate it. Um, sometimes making your own games can be a bit of work. I made a game for my brother a couple years ago. Not a sexy game, but I made a game for my brother um, it was actually a family effort and he still hasn't gotten it. So we're hoping to give that to him this year. But I went to the lengths of actually like creating a board game, like a board for it, getting it printed. It's uh, like official. It's a game. It has playing pieces. It has playing cards. It has like the whole shebang and it has no rules because that's the whole point of it is that it has no rules. So when making your own games, there's a lot of different resources you can look at. And why would I even be talking about this stuff? Well, one of the things I love to do is open people up to great new ideas for pleasure. Whether we're looking at this from a historical standpoint, a philosophical, you know, the philosophy of sex. We haven't really gone philosophical so much. However, I could. And, you know, talking about things from the psychological, anthropological, historical, biological, physiological, all those things that have to do with pleasure, 
I talk about all those from things like, you know, kinks to, you know, regular vanilla sex. This can be used, all these games can be used both for, you know, vanilla sex, as well as you can kink them up. So you can take these to any level. We got beginner's level, and we got the super advanced kink to the max level. And you can take these on any uh, level that you like. And what I like about this is that you can have a whole stash of these games around your home and nobody would even know because they can look like your regular playing games that you might just have around, right? I assume everybody's got games in their house, but maybe you don't. And the only difference is, is that the way you play them can be a little different. And then you can also have some of the homemade ones that you can you know, create even your own packaging for and have them tucked away and have them in your own private place. So why I talk about this stuff is because as a sex and intimacy coach, I'm always looking at how can we add more fun into our lives? How can we add a little something, something, you know, having conversations can be great and communication is key. I always say that. And one of the ways to communicate is through something playful and fun. So adding games to this can be a lot of fun to kind of take off the pressure and bring in the play. And a lot of times adults will, you know, when they do play, they'll get into play that's competitive, purposeful co competition, like you're playing poker to win money and save your house because you put your you know, house on gamble or something. Or, you know, it's playing to win. It's not usually just playing for the pleasure of play. And this is helping you adults be able to step into more play in a pleasurable, consensual, and also like no competition kind of way. And I love doing this because I, what I know through my work as a holistic health practitioner is that we need more pleasure in our lives and we need to be able to find resources and look at different things and, and look at things in different ways so that we can add more pleasure, relax a little bit. This world is incredibly stressful if you haven't noticed. And if we could just have a little play every day, that would be great. So what I would love for you guys to get, if you are into making your own sex game while we are doing this show, some of the things that you might want to have on hand are scissors, cardstock, some markers. You can also do a few other things, like if you happen to have spare dice, grab some of those. If you happen to have any games that involve letter cubes, like old boggle games, you can gra grab that. If you still love your boggle, then don't don't mess with your boggle game. What you can do is if you're in North America and maybe other parts of the world too, you might have dollar stores or I don't know what they're called in other parts of the world, but dollar stores are a great place um, and craft stores to find little wooden cubes and you can make your own dice out of them. So you can get the little wooden cubes and then you can put your own letters on it so you can make your own alphabet games, you usually want to do at least 16 cubes as Boggle has 16, but 25 is even better. So a five by five playing board that you might want to use. Uh, also, you can get other things like popsicle sticks and cut them into pieces and they can become tiles for say like a scr sexy Scrabble. However, if you already have Scrabble around your house, you can always take your Scrabble board and you can reinvent it into a sexy Scrabble. So how do you do any of these things? If you've already got games around and you're not really interested in going full DIY, let's talk about some options that you can do with things that you've already got around your house. Starting with Boggle, because it's one of my all time favorite games. And I already play a few versions of Boggle that you might not know existed. One of the versions of Boggle I play is regular Boggle, where you find real valid words that are in the dictionary. Um, Boggle number two is words that I know from any language can be included in Boggle. And Boggle number three is alien Boggle, where you, where if you're really frustrated and you can't find any words, then what you do is, I don't know, some of you are probably looking at this, you can see the letters and you're like, ash, lash, and you're finding words already. I know I get it. My brain does that with Boggle. So if you're looking on video, you might be able to see my Boggle, my Boggle game here. This is a Boggle from the 1980s, taking you back. I don't even think they come in this yellow brown color anymore. They used to be blue. They're blue now, I think, and they used to be this lovely 19, late 70s, early 80s, brown, yellow. So 
you can take these games and you can turn them into find the sexy words. So it might be a little bit trickier, but um, but you can have you can have fun with it. So you can even invent words, right? So alien boggle, like you can just invent a word like squiff. Now alien sexy boggle could be like squiff is, and then what happens with alien boggle is that you actually find the word, but you have to explain what the word means. And then you have to say where the word is from to what planet it's from. So squiff, for example, could be from the planet Quaylox. And from that planet, squiff means that you just had a roaring orgasm that also made your eyes pop out. So that's a squiff. So you can have fun with these things. It doesn't have to be like totally serious, right? Like you can just have fun, say things, get language out of your mouth. And when it's playful and it doesn't matter, then saying things like having an orgasm where your eyeballs pop out of your head is sometimes a little less daunting to try and say than to, to say something in a sexy way, like, oh, it was the biggest cum explosion of your life. Like that could be daunting for some people. So make it playful, make it weird. That's one way to go. Find the sexy words, invent some sexy words. So you can invent sexy words and then you can describe, it doesn't have to be alien sexy, but you know, I'm part nerd. So I like alien stuff, but you can just go with make it up sexy and you could make up a word like, you know, scythe. And what does scythe mean? Scythe means that you're going to have the blowjob of a lifetime. And then guess what? Take action. So the fun thing about finding words in any word games is you can create the challenge that if you find the word, then you take the action. You could have a game with one board of letters that could last you an entire evening of play. And it gets you creative. You can just make things up. I know that for some adults, it's really daunting to make things up. And actually, it's almost painful for their brains to think that they can just invent stuff out of thin air. And I get it. So I don't want to stress you guys out. There are other options. You don't have to play games where you invent stuff. Uh, although it can be a lot of fun and weird. And especially if you're sort of nerdy like I am and inventing words is a lot of fun and inventing sexy words is even more fun. Oh, just have so much. What could be better, really? Boggle with sexy, crazy words that you invented that you now get to describe to your lover and then take action. Hello, who doesn't want to do that? Right? I, I, all of you out there are like, right? I know, because most of you are like big nerds that are listening to me because that's how we roll on this. That's how we roll. That's just how we roll. Now, I have other games too. I love dice games and I have a game called Tenzi. So some, some, some of those game creators out there, feel free to uh, give me some creds out there for promoting you. I actually used to work in the um toys and games industry before i went full full hog on my on my own and went into uh into being a uh, holistic health practitioner i was a part-time health holistic health practitioner and meantime i had a full-time job working for a toy company so i got to look at a lot of toys how toys work over time some basics some real basic understanding of how to make rules make sense um, I worked with some of the people who were like, uh, like the lady who created Balderdash. I met her on many occasions, um, worked with them through one of their game developments. So it wasn't Balderdash, but it was one that came after Balderdash. Um, and a lot of other games too that you might have seen up and around in the world. Uh, so I won't name names right now, but they're that industry in itself is super creative. So anybody who can come up with games like that could also come up with sexy games. But however, the industry is not really geared wholly towards sexy games. Plus a lot of what's going on is people are just taking games like these and they're turning them into sexy games. So my other idea is, and the reason I grabbed Tenzi is because I like colorful dice. So I grab different colors because the different colors can represent different things, which can be helpful. Um, so for this case, I grab two dice, but you can have a game that involves three or more dice. 
um, we'll start off with a really simple dice game. And what you would want to do, so these are regular dice. You can buy sexy dice and go pay your $20, or you can create your own with literally go to the dollar store, get yourself a pair of dice, buy yourself some fancy dice for maybe a couple more dollars, uh, make your own, you know, get some of those wood blocks that I was talking about, color them up and put your own, you know, have two different colors of blocks and put your own numbers on them. It helps to have something that will indicate differences, right? So whether it's letters or numbers, um, when the dice are little, writing words on it can be tricky, but what you can do as well is if you do have the wood blocks, you can get like little stickers, put them through your printer, do like a size six print on them if your eyes are good enough to read that. And then um, you, you can Mod Podge over it. So Mod Podge is like the, the stuff you use for crafting that would keep the um, the paper on there really well, right? So it's like a shellac sort of, but it's less dangerous than shellac. So Mod Podge it, let it dry. You can have your own dice that way. And then what you wanna do is designate the numbers. So numbers one through six, and numbers one through six on this side. So while we go to break, I'd love for you guys to think about what, if you have two dice, what are things that you might like to do? Maybe one die represents actions and one die represents locations. And there are many other variations, but we'll talk about some options when we come back from break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back to talk about DIY sexy games that you can gift right after this commercial break. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for the Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email. Info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we are making some DIY sexy games you can gift. And before this break, we were talking about some games that you might have around your home that you can adjust into some, some games as well, like using Boggle, finding sexy words, um, I realize I have a whole bunch more of those to share with you. I will do that. But I did get into um, dice games because I love them. And this is something that will be super easy for you to make or or um, create, right? So if you can just go get yourself some dice, you want to make sure that you uh, demarcate that there's two different ones because the numbers will uh, be hard to tell them apart if you're using number dice. If you're making your own and getting wood and you are putting uh, words on one, then you might want to do one whole dice with locations and another whole dice with die, sorry, with um, actions. 
And then say, for example, you have another die with a different color, you might want to indicate clothes that have to be taken off, right? So you might want to start with one die and get down three rolls each for the clothes that have to come off. Say, for example, first thing that has to come off is that sweater. Okay. And then the next roll, it might be your socks. The next roll, it might be your underwear. But wait a minute, your pants are still on. So then you've got your pants with no underwear. You're going commando. We know who on this station loves going commando. I won't say who that is, but we have a host who is the commando queen. So, so um, and she's got a business that's called Mrs. Commando. So, <laughs> Miss Commando, Mrs. Commando. Anyway, look it up. You'll find out who that is. So we got our three die dice, and you, each die can represent some. Thing. I encourage you if you're using the number die to get a list and you can make this official if you are gifting this you can print this off on really nice cardstock you can have um, you know you can actually print it in a card if you want or on a postcard size piece of paper uh, you can get cardstock for really affordable you can also if you don't want if you don't have a printer and you don't want to get your own cardstock you can always send it to a printing press for like under a dollar you can get this printed and for probably under $2, you could even get your, your list laminated. And so you have a nice, really nice gift, looks professional, laminated, nice die, put them in a nice little bag so that you have a nice presentation for that. And you can, you know, stick that as an in as a stocking stuffer. It's a great, fun, playful thing to do. So if you need some ideas for locations, I'm going to just start with some for you so that you can get out those die, get out your list. Um, and here, here's six ideas for locations. As I'm sitting in my office right now, I'm thinking the office, the bedroom, against a wall, on the kitchen counter, in the bathroom, and the uh, living room sofa. There are six locations right there, right? So you can see how fast I can get up. Now, if you're a little more daring and you want to go for something a little more risque, you might have some locations that are outside of your home or locations that might get you caught, right? So it depends on how the level of riskiness you're looking at. Your level of riskiness could include things like, you know, if you live in an apartment building or something, um, I say that because I did this once. Um, the, yes, I did. Um, taking me back about 20, oh, 30 years right now. All right, in the uh, in like the corridor of a an apartment building. So you know that's pretty risque. Um, you can go for different things like bathrooms in restaurants. You can go for, you know, if you are uh, out and about doing things, it can be anywhere in a public location that won't be too risky, but sort of risky. So like bathrooms in a public location, you can get caught, but you might be okay. You might want to be doing something in a car that's in a parking lot, you know, taking you back to your teenage years. So get creative. Depends on the level of um, naughtiness or a level of exposure that you would like or potential danger you'd like to be in. Put down the locations that really uh, excite you, that you're curious about, and that you would like to either try that you haven't tried or that you really liked and you haven't done in a long time. So we got locations for one. Now let's take actions for another. So we can keep some of the actions really simple too, just for, for the beginner's sake on this. You can start with things like kissing, massage, um, stroking the genitals. <laughs> We've got, uh, maybe you've got i'm just my brain keeps on going to kinky things so i'm going to try and keep it really s subtle um hand yeah stroking you know genitals with your hands and then we've got oral sex maybe that's even going too far uh we've got you know oral sex in the public bathroom there you go and then you've got it's just a germ situation really that i'd be concerned about and then you've got other things like maybe some hot and cold play. Maybe you can throw in some kink, like you can throw in things like foot play or massage 
or I don't, I don't even know where I was at with that. So write those down. And then I was mentioning with the other one that you can either do this with clothing or guess what? Add some fun kinky extras. Like you could add in handcuffs. You could add in, um, you know, on your list. So you're going to have one list for each die, right? Six six things on each list. So number one represents this. Number two represents that. So on your third die, we're going for blindfolds. Uh, we're going for some handcuffs. We're going to go for uh, some something that you can use for impact play, like a whip, maybe feathers, like a feather boa, something sexy like a tie that you can be tied up with, and massage oil. We'll just go like something uh, normal for the average Joes out there that don't want to go too, too kinky. So right there, you have a lovely, sexy little game. You can print that off on a card, put it in a nice little bag, and gift that to your lover. And anytime you guys are feeling like you're not sure what to do or to how to have a conversation you can always say hey you want to play your do you want to play the dice game i gave you whip out the dice game roll those die and see what shows up it can be a lot of fun and take off a lot of pressure and when you've got that list you've already got combinations right so you've got six you've already got six locations with six actions with six kinky things I don't know the permutation and combination combination on that. I did I did take finite math in grade 13, but I tell you that was 30 years ago. And how to com how to combine that and calculate how many options we have, I'm not totally sure. So there's a lot. I can tell you that. I think it's something like I'm going with something like 60 combinations. I think it's like 60 combinations. So lots of options. Okay, so that is, and those are some options that you can use with dye. There are a lot of other things you can use with dye as well. If you've already got them, if you're already buying them, you can absolutely play games like you would, like if you roll a seven, what does that mean? You know, you can make numbers from one to 12 um, and just have the combination die going on. So all numbers under six, could be things that your partner does to you and all numbers from seven to 12 are things you do to your partner. So like you can think out of the box on this if you can't get different color dye and um, you wanna play it a little differently rather than locations, it can all be switched up from numbers one to 12 and then take turns rolling, right? So what do you normally roll in a game? You usually do at least three to see who the winner is. So best two out of three best three out of five just go and have fun with that and definitely write on the list of things that you would like done to you and things you would like to do to your partner if you're gifting this there isn't so much of a collaboration going on but if you are creating these games together for each other to gift to each other then you can collaborate on some of those ideas and have a lot of fun with that so die are really really affordable and anybody can play with those, you know, even if you don't have hands, you can throw those with your feet or even with your mouth, stick them in your mouth and spit them out. I say that because I think a lot of times there's an idea that, you know, this is only for, for people who are able-bodied. This isn't just for people who are so-called able-bodied. It can be for anybody. You can roll dice any way you like. And the next thing we're going to look at Okay, we've got these die. Oh, I'm looking at some things over here to my left. Things that you've probably played with in your life that can be fun. Um, the next thing up is sexy pickup sticks. I know you probably never thought of that. And in fact, neither did I till tonight when I was looking around going, oh, wait, sexy pickup sticks. So if you don't own your own set of pickup sticks, you can buy these. You could change the... Um, you can change the packaging on the outside yourself, right? You could put a sticker on here and just say sexy pickup sticks, write your own instructions on it. However, if that doesn't sound like fun to you and you really want to go full DIY, these are basically skewers. These ones, these are wooden pickup sticks and this one's a little dented. Um, the, you can get your wooden, you can get like wooden skewers 
you just, if they are skewers, you just want to sandpaper off the ends of it so they're not so sharp. So just get a little sandpaper, run that over that. You can paint these up yourself. And these would just be like the skewers, wooden skewers you would use for barbecuing, right? So super easy. You can get these kind of, of containers, like the pickup sticks is in a round cylinder. For those of you who are not watching, it's in a round cylinder that you can put a lid on. These are available usually at art stores so that you can put your art in to hold it. Um, also, they're good. Um, you can get them for mailing as well. So you can buy these to put and store your game in. You can have the different colors represent different things again, right? So if you happen to be, you know, playing the game, you if you if you lose, say, um, so we maybe we play pickup sticks is a little different, but our rules for pickup sticks is that if uh, if you move the pile, then um, then you don't get those points, so you lose those points. And whoever has the most points might get something after they play, depending on what the last color is that's left. So say say blue is left, maybe you're going to have something that would be potentially blue balling. So you, you could have some restrictions on pushing, edging maybe. You know, you could have something here that's, uh, you know, if your last pickup stick is yellow, then you could have that whoever is the winner has to either gets to receive or gift. That would be up to them. Yellow could represent something for you to the effect of, uh, what would yellow be? I would say, you know what, urination fascination. You could have some kink involved there. You could have some pee play. And we got a red one here, which could be something that, oh, these are just all kinky in my brain. These would be like spanking your bum till it's red. That's what I'm thinking. And then we have green ones, which would be like putting food on somebody's body and eating it off. And then there's a black one too, which is supposed to be like the most points. Um, and the black one to me would be like the blackout. You get blindfolded, you get tied up, you get all kinds of fun happening. Okay, that's the naughty version. I don't even, can't even right now think of a not naughty version because my brain has gone to the naughty world like hardcore. So... So, but you can, I'm sure, consider that you could create your own version. It might just be something lovely, like last one is yellow, we get kisses. Last one is blue, we get snuggle time. Last one is red, we, you know, get to have some love making. Last one is black. It's a wild card. It could be anything. So write down your rules for engagement, what your colors would mean for your pickup sticks. Make your own, buy your own as well if you want, and then just change the packaging. That can be quite easy as well. So consider that you can recycle, reuse these games. You can always get them at secondhand shops as well to get bits and pieces out of it. So lots of options on where and how to find these pieces. We will talk about some more DIY sexy, sexy games when we come back from this commercial break. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly, other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at 
Radio.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. As we were on commercial, I was just thinking, I bet there's a lot of you out there going, I would love some of those games, but who's got the time? If you write to me and you're willing to pay me, I will make you some games. We can discuss. Because I, as I mentioned before break, I actually really loved uh, being in the toy industry. And I really had a lot of fun doing that. Mayhaps, mayhaps, perhaps, uh, I will put a course on my um on my on my platform my teaching platform for some simple diy games but you'll have to look for that in future because i am getting everything moved over to a much better platform and we will have more courses up and coming for 2024 and so i'm writing this down sexy games um diy course it'll be it will be super affordable and super fun. So if you're not quite able to visualize what I'm saying when I'm talking about these things, that's cool. Not everybody can visualize what's spoken. So if you need a hand, uh, play-by-play, hands-on and instructional, you just let me know if you are interested. And if I get enough interest, I would be so happy to create a course. So when we're talking about um, different games that you might have around the house, we got things like I mentioned Boggle earlier. And as I was thinking about that, I was thinking that, you know, we got, you know, 26 letters in the English alphabet. Now, if you're, if you are in another country and you have, I think Hungarians have like 50 letters in their alphabet. I'll have to double check that. Um, you know, if you have, if you use any kind of, um, Chinese dialect characters. There's a lot of characters that you could be playing with. So depends on how this works for you, but I'm sticking with the English language for this one, 26 letters, no accents like the French alphabet. And what you can do is whoop, um, just come up with your naughty alphabet. So say we got we start with the letter A. Um, we can go with what could A represent, kids? That's right. It could be like ASS spanking or licking or whatever ASS play. I'm not going to say the word out loud so that we don't get, um, you know, B could stand for BJs. For those of you who don't know what a BJ is, just comment below and I will give you the full word on that. C could stand for that ever so naughty C word, um, both you know, whether you have a female genitalia or male genitalia, you got, in English, there are definitely two naughty words that can describe your genitals that start with C, could involve some licking. So D, you know, you could be spanking the D. <laughs> you could, I don't, guys, my brain has a lot of fun ideas. Go through the alphabet, find some naughty words that represent every letter and then you can put, you can either use the die and just see, you know, roll, pick one out of a bag and put it down. You can do that with Scrabble letters as well. Just take one out and put it down. One of the things you can also do is make your own, right? Like I had mentioned before. Uh, I recently, well, a year or two ago, I made myself 
uh, a new a new rune um, runes to play with. And because uh, my old ruins, one of them had cracked. And so I created my own out of wood. And so they're just like little pieces of one centimeter wood uh, branches that got cut out. So they're discs of wood because my husband's a woodworker and we have a forest. Well, my husband's in construction. We have lots of tools and we have a forest. So that was easy and free. And I just wrote on the wood and then I can just pull out things from there. So you can do that with any alphabet, whether it's the, you know, Norse alphabet, Norse runes, or whether you've got the English alphabet or whatever alphabet you want to work with. Super fun to get creative. I bet you could come up with 26 naughty things. If you can't, give me a call. I'd love to play with you. Uh, you know, in a 15 minute call, we can come up with your 15 naughty words for your game for sure. So we've got letter games. We've got all kinds of games. One of the games that you can play too is that you can have, say for example, you decide that you're going to have a, a cuddle movie night that can go extra more fun that it can become like, um, say for example, like a drinking game. But before you start, you can create a bunch of cards, like say 10 to 15 cards of different things. Like every time maybe somebody touches their nose in the movie, uh, you have to kiss, you know, you get, you have to kiss, right? It's kind of like when you go to a wedding and they tinkle on the on the cup and then, you know, and then the couple has to kiss. It's like that, but you know, you're watching a movie, somebody might touch their nose, you have to kiss somebody, um, you know, somebody says the word bum and you have to spank a bum. Somebody maybe says the word tree and you got to pull your pants off. Like you can make it really fun and you can have your own card references um, for that as well. So that watching a movie can be interactive, playful and sexy and you can do, you know, you can just keep it really simple, but, you know, I like to complicate things and make it like three, three times, uh, like the level of play. So, you know, you could just keep it simple to every time you see a couple touch, then you also touch, you know, if this is like a really new thing for you, then you can just keep it to that. If you want to up it, you know, up the level, then you could be doing everything that the couple is doing in say the movie slash porn, you could imitate that. <laughs> but it's tricky when it's porn guys, because sometimes there's like so many things involved and you might not have the props. So watching regular shows, using words that they say a lot in the show can be um, helpful as keywords, especially if it's a movie or a show you've already watched and you're not really missing anything. It's more like the astute listening to be able to hey, you know, if I hear this word, I get a kiss, woo, like bonus, right? So it can create a lot of fun um, there as well. And whether you're doing that with um, movies or whether you do it to my podcast, go listen to my podcast, go listen to all the podcasts on Inspired Choices Network, get your list of words and get yourself turned on horny and having fun with your lover because why not? That's what we're here for, guys. That's why we exist, is it not? To inspire people. And if that's going to get you having some fun and getting yourselves out there and getting all sexy, then that's just awesome. So I know that a lot of you also are probably thinking, well, I'm, I'm really not that good at um, any of this like DIY stuff. So like, what else could I do that wouldn't be like that hard? Like, I don't want to craft. I don't want to go to the store. The chances are what you do have at home is a piece of paper and a pen, and you might even have a jar or a bag. And you can just use that to make a game. What you can do is similar to the dice, you can just write out a bunch of ideas of things you'd like to do. And in this case, I really invite you to collaborate on this with your partner that you each write down five locations of places that you'd like to have fun and it's okay if they repeat and then you have another bag or jar you can use a jar or bag that has you know different things you'd like to try so you each put in five so collaborate on that that one can be a lot of fun that you can do with each other I, I actually recommend um I've recommended this one to many couples who have felt like they were in a 
uh, like a blah state and they're not really sure what to do anymore. And it's that one's been really helpful for them. Motivational, actually, we use it as a motivating tool to get um, to get some business rocking for a couple. And they found it was really productive. So they have their sexy jars that they use. And so you can use this as a motivation tool as well. Like, hey, if you know, if your target is something to do with health or if your target is to do with something emotional and that you want to have your your um, reward be something sexy, then you at the end of the week, if you have succeeded, then you get to pull your things out of the jar and receive them. So you can absolutely use sex as a motivator. I am a huge fan as um, utilizing sex as a tool to motivate us into something greater, into the greatness that we can be, into happier, healthier, more pleasurable beings. And when when you can have it be something that doesn't have to be overly daunting or serious, it can take a lot of weight off of the par- each other so that like one partner doesn't feel like they are always having to initiate or come up with the ideas you have everything in the jar it's ready to rock and roll you have your little bag it's a really great just easy play game because you're just pulling out yours isn't, isn't like a heck of a lot of competition um but you can make it competitive you can absolutely play games that are competitive and winner takes all putting some stakes on the board. We'll talk about those next, but before, just when we come back from commercial break. So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspire Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for the Pleasure Zone with Melitza. Every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email info at melitzayelenich.com now back to the program welcome back sweet pleasure seekers so we've been talking about some diy games tonight simple things you can make and simple things you might already have around home that you can play with and i think using some games that you've already got you know whether you've got like if you've got for example monopoly at home one of the things you can do is switch up your monopoly board put some new rooms on there. Like instead of boardwalk, you might have, uh, oh, you might have like the red light district of Amsterdam. You know, you might switch it up to something a little foxy. So I'm just gonna reinvent that whole board in my head right now. And uh, No, so stop that brain. And you can also do things like if, you know, in Monopoly, when you go to jail, then you actually put, maybe some handcuffs on your lover, right? And that can be playful too. When they have to go to pay rent, maybe they can negotiate. It's either you pay your rent or you give me oral sex. You know, you can have some fun with Monopoly in ways I bet you never considered. So I would love to hear some of your creative ideas when it comes to board games you've already got, maybe some things you've already done. And if you've got things that you've already done and you would love to share them, Please, if you are listening on a um, one of the locations that you can comment, please comment below. If you aren't listening on a place that you can comment, I'd love for you to write to me and let me know what fun you've been having with regular board games, how you've made them sexy, because you can absolutely do that with any existing game. Uh, things like Clue, you know, you could take out all of the uh, all of the web. Well, some of the weapons you could still use for fun, like the rope and the candlestick. Just maybe the revolver could be a little bit scary, but um, you know, you could have some fun with some of the, the those, and you can add some new ones as well. So 
doing playing with games just adding a sexy twist to them can be really fun also you can do one of the things where the you where you do just play it like you would normally play a game with the regular rules but winner happens to get to have like sex bonuses at the end so if you win then i would put your you know what you're betting in an envelope so your partner doesn't even know what's going to happen so whoever wins does not even know what's going to either happen to them of course consent is required so it can just be exciting like you know you're going to lay down and you're going to have be you know just uh just like sensory experience from like whether it's kisses and hugs like my body's actually thinking about feeling all of this <laughs> it's like the words are not coming out but you can have a lot of fun with uh just the idea that any game can lead to something playful and sexy and it doesn't have to start off serious it can also what it can do is help you kind of get in the groove of connecting and having it be more playful rather than serious and serious serious positions and do it all like serious you can just get in and have some fun you can do that with regular card games as well you could play you know strip fish if you like or strip war strip poker is something everybody has always heard of i'm sure but you can do this with any game you could do it with even that anybody say for example you're playing a regular game like i don't know like fish for example and at the end whoever has like the red jack ends up having to do a b and c to the other person you can make your rules up on this on your own and you can use literally any games you've got lying around one of the ones that i find super fun and i have turned it into a sexy game just because that's how my brain operates is a game called mad libs and mad libs also comes out in um, book form as well and in mad libs they'll ask you to fill in things like adjectives, verbs, nouns. And so when you do fill them in, then everything can sound a little bit more crazy. So what, what you would have when you play Mad Libs is that you just ask the person to come up with an adjective, a verb, and then say another verb. Uh, and then you have them written down and then you read them back to your partner. So if you're really uncomfortable with like saying sexy things, Sometimes getting these words out of your mouth through games like this can be really helpful so that it doesn't feel super serious at first. And then those naughty words just become part of your language and they roll off your tongue. And then, you know, then you want to have them in your mouth for a really long time. I can enjoy saying things that are super naughty all the time. Because my brain would love to say about 5 million naughty words right now, but I also don't want to be kicked off of all the locations we're on and I don't want our station to get in trouble so I'm not going to say those words even though my brain really wants to so mad libs super fun excellent way to have uh to tap into your your silliness your goofiness your sexiness your naughtiness and there is I think a naughty version and there are naughty versions of a lot of these games already that exist out there like I, I'm pretty sure there's like naughty scrabble or something like that but a lot of them cost more money so by all means like naughty dice generally go for 10 to 20 dollars when you can buy a set of dice for like a dollar at the dollar store so you can see why making your own can be sensible and you can change your your own dice up all the time because you can change the card up with what you know numbers one through six represent you can have several options for what one through six represent as well and then you know you could have the beginner medium and advanced level of sexy dice game and that can be all set up for you and you can always get those laminated i love laminating cards so that's <laughs> I'm a fan of that, especially if you might be having some fun, sexy times with them. You don't want them getting any fun juices all over them that might ruin the writing. So I hope you guys get some ideas that you can play with. If you still feel a little stumped and stuck on how to do this, for sure, remember to get a hold of me and I would love to have a 15 minute call with you. 15 minutes are free. Anything after that is paid for. And next week we're going to be talking about what- Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone. 
with sensual movement artist Milica Jelenic. The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.